Good afternoon, I'm Michael Lartzis on Sports Daily alongside Daryl Reed. We're on Sports.com and Ustream.tv. Joining us via Skype is a very special guest. He's the presiding president of the retired players portion of the NFL Players Association. He played with the Cowboys and the Redskins and these days he's a lawyer as well. And he's here to talk about the NFL lockout and the latest developments or the non-lockout as a judge has ordered the players back to work and has ordered the owners to allow the players back to work. Gene Fugit, thanks for joining us. You sat out the labor situation in the 70s, so you're well versed on this. What is the latest on this situation and what's going on? This is all about money, and, and, and we have to remember that we're talking about a lot of money. Last year, we, we think the NFL made over $9 billion in revenue, and they project in the very near future that they're going to be making $25 billion. That's $800 million per owner. And the question is, how much of that is a fair share for the players? We didn't have leverage in collective bargaining. They canceled that agreement two years ago. And for two years, they've been planning to lock us out. They go to the Supreme Court to try to harm us. They've been in court everywhere they can to try to harm the players and get money. And so far, they've lost at every turn. So now today, it's like they didn't expect this ruling and guys want to work out and need to get their bonuses and, and get the work out, and some of them can't even get into the facilities. Well, there are some facilities that are letting players in, but none seem to be letting players do anything other than walk in the door. They're not allowing players to work out. They're not allowing players to uh, pick up playbooks and read their plays or check out equipment or, or grab balls. So what do you think is going to happen here? Is this just going to play out in court? I mean... Well, yeah, it's going to play out in court. And right now, it's a, it's a lawyer's delight. And it's like being in a cab with the, with the meter ticking. Because every time that they refuse to follow a judge's order, not only can they be found in contempt of court, but any monetary damages that are charged against them will be tripled. So they are really running a risk by not letting the players back in. And we'll see how long that charade lasts. I mean, it seems like, just like you said, Gene, like the owners were very ill-prepared for this to happen and this judgment to come down today. I mean, that, that judgment started in, back in, on April 7th, I believe, and, and for it to come down today and the judge to make this decision, the owners should have been more prepared for them to, to lean towards the players. Well, the owners are prepared. They're prepared to do everything they can to lock the players and the fans out of this great game. Gene, what about the draft? Now can, can we have a draft or is everybody a free agent? Because the way I understand it, if this, if this ruling actually stays, everybody's a free agent and there is no draft because, again, there is no uh, players association as a labor union. It's a trade association. What a wonderful time. Boy, I sure wish I was an uh, all-pro tight end today as opposed to 30 years ago. Look, there's a real problem. The, the last gasp, of the expired collective bargaining agreement is the draft. There was a provision in there that said, hey, if we don't agree, we'll at least have this draft in April, blah, blah, blah. But after the draft, it's not clear even if the players, I mean, the teams will continue to have rights to the players they even selected. And this is a great time for fans, by the way. You fans out there, you need to hold owners accountable because not all of them want to win. And you can tell the ones that want to win because they're letting their players work out. <laughs> Gene, can you talk to us about some of the biggest differences between this current lockout and, and perhaps what happened in the past with the NFL? Well, in the past, we were always forced to go on strike. There were times that we were in the court, but we were usually under the labor laws in America, which are very pro-ownership, pro-management, and tilted toward the owners. That's why our pension plan is messed up, disability plan is messed up. You know, the owners can you know, do a, have a lot of power because we can't collectively bargain. Our careers are less than four years, and they know if they can get this thing in September, that guys are going to need money, and maybe they can win. That's their plan all along, was to try to defeat the union as opposed to trying to work with the union. And the court found them guilty of doing that, negotiating behind our back for TV money to lock us out. So I think that the league really has, does not have clean hands, they do not look good, and they're illegal. 
They're illegal right now if you can't even let the players in where the judge ordered it. And they said, well, we're going to wait and if we can appeal. That's not how it works in America. When a judge makes an order, that's the law of the land. Gene, what do you think is going to happen next? Uh, the, the owners are going to appeal here, but what's going to happen is, is this, uh, from everything that I'm reading, uh, the appeal will fail. It's very unlikely that a, that a, a judge, after an 80-page decision, will overturn her own opinion. So now it goes to what they call an appeals court, and, and that could be uh, this week, it could be next week. They could decide to take the case or not take the case, and they could decide to grant uh, an injunction or not grant an injunction. But I think the law is on the player's side. Now, now, if they grant an injunction, injunction, what what exactly happens, Gene? Well, if it said, what was that question again? If they grant an injunction or don't grant an injunction, well, what's the if difference? the court in uh, grants an injunction, that would overrule this decision, and then the lockout would start again. But but the owners can't make a strong case of them being harmed, where every player who had a chance to get a bonus, every player who had surgery, every player who needs to get in shape for the season so they can avoid concussions is being harmed every minute that they can't do that. So it's very difficult, I think, for the owners to prevail on that theory. That, that's very true. That's very true. You, I mean, you are recovering from a knee injury. How important is it for you to get back to a facility and to get working out? Well, well number one, there's no, there's no facility, there's no place to rehab or recover and work out from, from an injury than your, your respective teams. I mean, th that's all day. That's, that's maybe a 12-hour day where you're icing, rehabbing, icing, rehabbing. And I don't think there's any facilities, especially with the insurance problems right now, everything that, that happened when the lockout happened, there's no other place or no better place for a player to heal from an injury than, than their own training room. And, so, and So we got a chance now, finally, to fix the game. We do not have transparency in the game. We don't know what the owners are doing. We know a lot of money comes in. They say we get audited financials. That's only partially true. So... This is a chance to finally get it right, because it's not right. I still don't know how many concussions I had. I played eight seasons and had no right to my medical records, and it wasn't until 2006 that we got it right, and Tampa Bay still charges for every page. So, see, we still have issues that have to be addressed, and player safety is not going to be negotiated, because we're not even negotiating about that stuff anymore. It's about how much players are going to get paid, and that's former players and current players. Gene, do you really feel like the owners are going to end up having to open their books? I think that's the yes. I think yes. that's the final step of what would push them to the edge. Yes. Because I, they that's something they don't want to do. They don't want to see what how much money it really is and what they're doing because if they didn't have an issue with it, they would have done it a long time ago. So, that is a major issue. You are right on point about that. But they will go, like, until the ninth inning if it's a baseball game. They're going to wait until the last pitch of the last out of the last inning of the last day of the season because uh, they have so much money to gain, and they have a union to break, and they're being led by a lawyer that did that for the National Hockey League. So uh, their strategy is all skewed. And don't forget, the owners don't even agree. Jerry Jones won't even get a sponsor for his stadium. Calls it Cowboys Stadium because he doesn't want to share the money. Gene, so I guess football fans can be happy because it would seem like there will be a 2011 football season and it will be on schedule. The only thing is this draft might be for not. Is, is that what well, you the say? Rules, yeah, the rules are not clear. All we know is that there, in most likelihood there will be a season and the people who make their living on the game will be able to work. And we're talking about players, vendors, the cities that, that depend on the tax revenue, all of America, how important this game is, they will have that game. But whether they have franchise players, transition players, uh, you know, whether they're paying money into a pension plan and that kind of stuff, who knows? So when the lockout was lifted and the judge made this ruling, do they not go back to the old CBA rules or, or there, are there no rules? Can a, a free agents after this draft and current free agents in the NFL do they, are they not able to sign with a team at this point, or can they well, sign contracts? Well, here's where it gets tricky. See, Darrell, it gets real tricky because under traditional labor law rules, the owners cannot unilaterally, which is by themselves, institute new policies.
that are very different from the old. So they got to pretty much keep working conditions as they were and be very careful that they're not doing anything to make it worse because they're no longer protected by the CBA. All 1,500 players have an individual right to sue if they can't get in and go to work tomorrow. I mean, it's crazy. That would be a big class action suit, I would imagine. No, just imagine if each individual player files a suit. That'd have to be a class action. I mean, I'm get, my injuries may not be the same as yours. <laughs> That's very true. It was, yeah, if I got a $10 million bonus next week, I mean, come on. We got players with roster bonuses. It certainly will be an interesting situation. Do you think at the end of the day a judge will decide everything that goes down or this will force the owners to come to the table? Uh, owners got to come to the table. If not, they're going to have to open their books. I think a judge eventually will rule for them to open their books if they don't come to the table sometime soon. Yeah, they got to come to the table. But the thing is that they have already designed a season that they can miss four games. So the question is, when are they coming to the table? That's very true. And are they bringing any money? <laughs> four games into the season, and at that point they feel that the players will fold. That's, that's my prediction, and I was right on this one, so I'm going to stick with uh, that. That uh, four games into the season, the owners will come to the table when they feel the players will be crying, we're ready to play and do anything to play because we need money. That's, well, I, 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 think hope, that's I hope it's sooner than that. I, I hope that cooler heads on the owner side will prevail. And uh, thank you for your time and your insight. We look forward to hearing more and seeing how this uh, develops. I'm Michael Artsis alongside Daryl Reed. This is Sports.com.